All right, Dogs by Nature, Rufio here. Today we're breaking down a pair of Nick Chubb touchdowns, one receiving, one rushing, and we're going to talk a little bit about the Browns' run game uh, in their matchup against the Atlanta Falcons. So one thing I was really excited by in this game was the Browns' use of exclusively the zone running game. Now, I've obviously been a fan of this dating back to the days of Kyle Shanahan's tenure in Cleveland. I wrote a couple articles back then about the influence of Alex Gibbs on the zone run game. Uh, feel free to, to try to go back in time and find those, check those out. Maybe I'll do some more in the future. The reason I think the zone running game has been so successful in the NFL, uh, when teams really, really focus on it, is because you can make the plays look so much different to the defense and everything feels the same and you think about it the same way uh, as an offense. You know, if you didn't notice, we exclusively ran zone running plays against the Falcons. And we had a lot of success doing it. You know, and, and a lot of that obviously is due to Nick Chubb uh, and the, the guys we have up front blocking for him. Uh, but I think a lot of that is due to, to Freddie Kitchens in this scheme as well, focusing on this zone run game. So here you see a type of zone blocking that we call a split zone or a slice. Uh, we're going to have Orson Charles here come across the formation behind the play and get a kick out block. We're going to have the five down linemen uh, run a zone play to the right. So they're all moving as a unit. Uh, and what they're going to do is determine before the snap, they're looking to double team the down lineman here. Uh, and someone is going to work off of that down lineman up to the second level to get a linebacker, uh, kind of depending on how things sort out, you know, the, uh, the defensive line can sort of stunt to play games and things like that. So we would say both of us, you know, we're going to look to to start on this guy here and we're going to work our way off of him up to 41. And that way if 41 scrapes over the top, uh, we'd have the guard go get him. And if he stays on the back side of the play, we'd have the tackle kind of push this defensive tackle and then go get up to 41. So on this play, uh, we have Greg Robinson and Joel Batonio working off of 97 here. This down lineman, and they're headed up to get 59. Uh, we have J.C. Treader, the center, and uh, Kevin Seidler, the right guard here, working on this tackle and trying to go up to get 55. So you'll notice on the snap, this three-technique tackle stunts inside. <clears throat> that means Seidler can sort of leave a hand. Make sure he's not penetrating through that gap, and Treader is able to take him head on. Zeitler is then working his way up to the second level. Uh, we may have confused assignments here because I don't think anyone's blocking 55. I think uh, Zeitler is on his way up to get this safety at first, and then later realizes, oh man, my guy's inside. I better turn back and try to get him. Uh, on the back side again, Betoni and Robinson here. Working a double team off of this down lineman up to 59. Uh, we get movement here. So as Betonio moves to his right, the lineman moves with him. That means Betonio locks him up. Robinson here ideally would try to push him and shove him past the play. Or if he's too far gone, he's just going to you know, get into space here and then work his way up to the linebacker, uh, which Robinson does excellent, excellent job right there. Uh, the split guy, the, the, what makes this a split zone is a tight end or a back or someone else is going to come across the formation in the back. Again, we get the kick out on that end line, man on the line of scrimmage right there. Uh, and that is to essentially create a cutback lane. So this play, Chubb is supposed to aim. Usually the aiming point is somewhere, you know, right on this guard's hip here. Uh, and he's going to aim in this A gap and press that. And then if if any color, any white shows up in that hole, he is going to break this back to the back side of the run. And so as he starts off, sure enough, at his aiming point, there's a, a big old defensive tackle staring him right in the face. So he's going to put his right foot in the ground, cut this back to the left, and he should be able to then follow that kickout block in the back side of the play. And what you're hoping for here is not only a nice kick out to create a seam as the rest of the line goes to the right, uh, but you're hoping that the linebackers flow with the line. So as the line takes their steps to the right, you're hoping to get the linebackers flowing that way as well. You have them come up into the gaps between linemen and Chubb can cut back and the, line, and the linebackers kind of have a hard time sort of escaping and getting out in time 
to go make a tackle. Uh, in this case, we don't get 55 block too well, but Chubb works his magic here and actually has a double cut. So he cuts once, seeing this defensive tackle here. He cuts again, seeing that linebacker pop out there. And Nick Chubb is off to the races for a good 20 yards, finishing that run nice and strong. Uh, so that's a split zone play. We ran exclusively zone runs against the Falcons, except for draws, which are really more out of the passing game. Um, and you're going to see some more of them right here. So what do we get? So we get literally the same play. Uh, you know, Kitchens said they didn't stop us. We got 20 yards on the first one. Why not dial this thing up right here again? Uh, we have the same motion by the wide receiver. There's obviously a number of plays that we can run off of that where the receiver uh, can get the ball and do something with it or become a pitch option. Um, so we have that window dressing on it. Um, and you can see on the snap, this is a false start, but we have the line making their zone blocks, stepping to the right, getting up to the second level to get the backers. Uh, and we have Charles again coming behind the formation ready to get that kick out block. Uh, so here it is from the backfield and you can see Chubb uh, just make his little false start there. But the line again is all working to the right with Charles, uh, the kick out, the slice block coming back to the left. Same exact play. So we, met, we back up five yards. And what does Kitchen do? He dials up the same look, only this time it's from shotgun. And we don't have the receiver orbit motion. We have a stack up here of two receivers, so we don't have that receiver to put in motion. Uh, but we bring, this time it is Njoku into the formation to be the slice block to cut behind. Same play. Not a terrible result, um, but out of shotgun here. And you can see on this play the ability for us to build off of this even further. right? So from the, from the under center version, we have the orbit motion from the wide out. We could do something off of that later. Uh, here from the shotgun version, we have the old Alex Smith, uh, Tim Tebow kind of pitch option where Baker could be reading a man, uh, either of these guys, on the backside of the play to give it to Chubb or to keep it. Uh, if these guys flow inside, Baker can keep. Uh, and then Baker could stretch a defense wide with Njoku, instead of being responsible for a kickout block here, uh, he could actually be the pitch man on that option. So we have that built in if we want it later on. Look for that in the upcoming game. Uh, but as it stands, it's a good old split option. It's a play we've been running all game. Uh, and we get a good solid chunk of yards on first down out of it three yards not not terrible not exactly what you want um, but what do we do we come right back to the same look it's again it's Njoku coming across for the slice block we've got Callaway this time he's not in motion but he's going to orbit back around the quarterback uh, only this time it's not a run it is a fake so we are play action fake here play action fake to Callaway behind and this is looking like a passing play. We can see the Falcons bailing with the receivers. We see we get this corner here. We get this linebacker here. We're pulling them to the pass options on the play. And it ends up being a screen to Nick Chubb. Wide open, easy touchdown. But this fake works because we ran that play into the ground. We ran the split zone into the ground. Uh, and now the defense is expecting a play action look off of it, and we kind of fake the fake. Um, so this is a great example of a microcosm of what Kitchens is bringing to the table right now. Uh, these are things that look leaps and bounds different, night and day different to the defense, uh, and they are all built off of the same look. Loving what he's doing with this kind of thing. So next we'll break down Nick Chubb's 92-yard touchdown run, but before we go to that, uh, I wanted to show a play that if you were paying attention to the press conferences, Baker said that 92-yard run that we were able to set up, we made it look exactly like a play we ran the previous drive. Well, here's that play we ran the previous drive. We have Jarvis Landry motion into the formation. As I've noted, this is a heavy run tendency for the Browns. Sure enough, we do run it here. Uh, and we get, a, we get a nice chunk of change on this run, but this is almost all Nick Chubb. Uh, this is a run that's designed to go to the strong side. This is an inside zone play. 
Um, it's the same zone blocking principles as that split zone. Uh, the aiming points for the linemen in terms of where they want to step are a little bit different. Uh, Chubb's aiming points are a little bit different as well. Um, but the principles as to who is blocking who are the same. So again, you see the same kind of double team the down lineman and get up to a linebacker principle. If that linebacker flows one way, you know, Hubbard will get him. If he flows the other way, uh, Zeitler will, will go and pick him up. Uh, so here we see we're able to knock that lineman inside. The linebacker shows to the right, and it's Hubbard's job to go pick him up. He does there. You know, everybody else is pretty much a hat for a hat in the line. Uh, and then on the left of the play, we've got Betonio uh, and Treader here responsible for 42. So Betonio with a little light hand inside is still able to redirect and get to his target. Uh, so the good part about this play is that for the linemen, the assignments are very much the same, right? We're efficient because we don't have to spend time identifying Oh, in the, against this formation, against this defensive look, who do I block if it's power? Who do I block if it's counter? If it's one of these run block, uh, gap blocked running plays, we have the same assignments. It doesn't matter which play we're running, and that's one of the reasons I love that zone scheme because you know we can make these runs look different. We can give a whole bunch of different looks off of this same base, but to the lineman, it's all the same. And that way, instead of exploring the breadth of offensive football in terms of how many different plays can we run they get to explore depth in terms of okay we really only have this one blocking pattern uh, but I can get to know how to run this against every single look that we're going to be able to see uh, every single defensive front uh, we're going to be able to adjust it and pick up different guys if we want and run different looks off of it because we keep everything the same. Uh, so again, on this play, we don't have much daylight for Chubb. You can see initially he wants to bounce the run outside. He sees that corner charging in fast. Uh, and this is just, this is all running back, vision, talent, power. You know, Chubb shre uh, shrugging off one tackle, dragging in another two guys past the first down marker. This run is pretty much all Nick Chubb. Now, ironically, if we get to the 92-yard the touchdown run, this is almost all our line and Freddie Kitchens. Uh, so you can see here again, we have the same basic structure. We've got this big set with multiple tight ends. We motion Landry into the formation to block the single high, uh, to block the safety in the box. Uh, again, heavy run tendency on behalf of the Browns, and we took advantage of that a couple times this game. Uh, but this time, instead of running strong and blocking to the strength of the formation, we set it up to go the other way. And of course, we've all seen this a million times by now. Never gets old Nick Chubb race into the end zone. Well, here's how it happened. Uh, so the previous drive, we ran the same formation, the same motion. We ran strong. This time, we're going to run weak. So as you can see from the end zone angle, uh, the Falcons have two defenders out here. They have one directly over center and one uh, linebacker back off the line, but pretty much on center as well, maybe right on the inside uh, leg of the center there. Uh, but essentially what this means is that we have three blockers. We've set them up to believe this play is going to our left, and we know that we are going to the right. So the offense knows where the play is going. That's a quickness advantage, right? That's an advantage we have right off the snap of the ball to be able to get out to the right. And that means if either this linebacker or this lineman go to the strong side of the play at all to where Betonio can block either one, that we have nothing but green grass over here as long as we can execute our assignments. And sure enough, that's what happens. The Falcons were showing us this look all game where they would line someone up in a zero technique, head up with the center, but they would stunt or slide to one side. Uh, and here he's sliding weak. Treader is able to pass him off, leave a stiff hand behind, make sure he's not penetrating that gap for Betonio to go pick him up. Uh, Treader then is able to get one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker. And as we can see, this is running to daylight. There is not a defender who is not being blocked by one of our best blockers, by one of our down linemen, anywhere close to Nick Chubb. 
He gets into the second level untouched, and everything from this point in the run on is Nick Chubb. He eludes the safety, he follows his block, and he's able to outrun the rest of the defenders and route to the end zone. Uh, so, you know, these are benefits overall of keeping things simple for the offense, making it complex for the defense. Uh, I've shown you a bit of the zone run game, a bit of the split zone, a bit of inside zone. We're able to set them up left and go right. We're able to run play action and screens and all these different looks off of our main look. And the reason that we're able to explore that depth, again, is because we don't have the breadth of offense. We didn't run power this game. We didn't run counter. And when we pare things down, we keep it simple. We're able to execute at this level. And when we can do that, we can win a lot of football games. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. I'm Rufio. Make sure to visit dogsbynature.com for all your uh, in-depth analysis and, and breaking news. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the chat.